Well, guys, Luke Kennard has been Duke's best and most consistent player, according to Jeff Capel. And Notre Dame's Mike Gray said, if Kennard has 30, we don't win this game. Now, Kennard had 30 in the second half against Wake Forest, a game he said was fun. And guys, when I talked to him yesterday, you can hear the smile in his voice, the happiness in his tone. He said, this team has been through so much adversity. To stay together and find a way to battle back was the best feeling. That fun work. They haven't had a lot of that this year at Duke. And you could tell what a relief it was to get that win. Perhaps the best part, though, the text from Coach K saying, I'm proud of you guys. Second best thing was they get their jerseys back. They get to wear their clothes again. I, I thought maybe that they would practice in one of those Belushi shirts that just said college <laughs> in the front. Duke wins the opening tip. Blue Devils have had to change up their starting lineup several times this year. Notre Dame goes with its typical lineup, and Kennard, after making 10 straight in the second half against Wake Forest, misses his first shot of the night. Kennard shooting better than 54% on the season. He has been acknowledged, despite all the attention on Grayson Allen and on the freshman from Duke, that Luke Kennard's been their best player. Well, I don't think there's any question. I mean, Luke Kennard has done it in the clutch. He, he, 10 for 10 in the second half, 30 points in the second half. He's been as good a player as there is in the country. I think Kennard's the first team All-American. The shot from D.J. Beecham is no good. There's the leading rebounder for the Irish, Bonzi Coulson, going for the foul. And he just out-tough Tatum. Tatum is in there. He needs to understand he's a rebounder. Coulson was behind him and went over him and got the bucket. The average is better than 10 and a half rebounds per game. Bonzi using those long arms, and Matt Farrell has it going the other way. Now, keep an eye on him. He's a wizard with the ball, and he can also shoot it, though that one's a little bit long. And that time much better by Tatum. He held his block out a little bit. It's going to be huge. And Tatum rebounds, screens, runs. Tatum ran the floor that time, Dan, and wanted the alley-oop from Allen, but Grayson got better of it, and he's getting his typical on-the-road reception. The second half, he'll be going right into the... Notre Dame crowd and the Blue Devils have the ball. Emil Jefferson, good move. Hey, that was sweet. A little crossover from the left corner or from the left elbow. You can't really help when he makes that move because Grayson Allen's sitting there ready to shoot. Martinez Gevin tries to bounce pass to beach him. It's lost and goes out of bounds off of Notre Dame. It'll be the Blue Devils ball. This is the most solid guy on Duke. How about this crossover? Just goes right around, finishes at the rim. Watch Bonzi Colson here. There's no excuse for that if you're Tatum. Bonzi Colson is about six foot five, six foot six. Tatum, long arm, great shoulders. That should never happen. Bonzi's got those Inspector Gadget arms. Yeah. He's, he's got a long arm. The first shot of the night is pure from Grayson Allen. I'm telling you, again, late in the game. Jeff Capel went to Allen and went to Kennard. It, I think that should be their game plan, period. Every, it's not a democracy basketball, Reese. It's not. A shooter, shoot, score, score. If you can't do that, then screen, rebound, and run. Do you think everything when the Blue Devils everything. have the ball needs to go through three and five? Everything. Tatum included, everybody else needs to play I, off of those two. I would let Tatum screen and pop occasionally, rebound like crazy. And make sure that you run like right now run, but I'm going through these two guys That's story missed that three He's an excellent shooter But he scuffled in the game against Georgia Tech on Saturday He was just one of seven from the four and one of four from three and the Blue Devils off to a good start Offensively All right. That's not bad either. Yeah <laughs> Jefferson you know what meals shoot it every now and then I just as long as you're going to the rim That's cool, but everything else jump shots those two but that's sort of what you're talking about, is playing off of those guys and then playing to your strength. Here's Farrell. He'll go like a whirling dervish through that lane on the drive. He's a fearless guy with a little bit of edge and attitude. He started in the tournament last year. He was over the top, and he is skyjacked. And here come the Blue Devils. Tatum can do this, leading the break. Allen for three. Allen chasing the offensive rebound, but Vestoria has it. Hey, if Tatum wants to do that, that's great. Vestoria made a nice play there, because Grayson Allen knew the shot was long, chased it down, Vestoria stayed with it. Ponzi will fade away, and Allen has the rebound. And they retreats quickly, Allen gets into the lane, and Colson steals it away. Here's B.J. Beecham, who had a strong outing against Georgia Tech. Beecham gets past Jefferson, ball gets out of bounds, and he will stay with the Irish. Already, Jefferson and Tatum have been in much better defensive help position 
than they were against Wake Forest. Honest to goodness, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like what Wake Forest was able to just drive it, drive it, drive it. And obviously, Jeff Cable did a nice job, got the bigs in help in the one day in between. And they got it straightened out, which is not easy to do. The story of falling gets rid of it before he travels. Notre Dame just hit one of its first six shots. Rex Pluger's checked into the game. It's him wearing zero. Bonzi spinning on Allen. Another one for seven. Bold shooting Irish to start. And one of the reasons that they've had this great success against Duke since joining the ACC is because typically they shoot it well. But we've also seen them in these games fall into a hole and rally. Here's Kennard using the right hand, and Luke's no good, and Bonzi Colson collects yet another well, rebound. That, that was pretty good. They made Kennard shoot over people, not around people. You can't let Kennard in the lane. If you let Kennard in the lane, that's bad business. Same thing on this end. If you let B.J. Beecham in the lane, that's bad business. But you got, if they do get in the lane, you got to make them shoot over people. They're a little aggressive. The ball is kicked. Irish will keep it. Duke off to a 6-2 start. Three to make consecutive. Elite eight. You know, it's been interesting about Mike. First, I can't believe he's been here 17 years. Second, so many coaches around the country follow Mike and his offense. Whether Remember back in the day at the burn offense when they were shorthanded, he spread it out. But that, you know, plays fast. Now, I know that coaches come here, they study tape. He has become an offensive guru in NCAA basketball. Farrell. Buckley. It helps have guys who lift up over 6'11 guys and knock them in. You know, Bray was telling me today that when he saw Farrell in high school that he reminded him of Bobby Hurley. And in terms of playing with a little bit of an edge, but the one thing that you could make the case for, at least uh, early in the career, is that Farrell probably shoots it better, might have a little bit more range. Yeah, I think he has more pop, too. Now, he's not going to be as good a player. Bobby Hurley, one of the all-time right. players. But, but Farrell has a little more quickness. You were talking about it off air, side to side, a little more pop to lift up on his jump shot. Jeff Capel making some substitutions. Grayson Allen, Emil Jefferson going to the bench. Frank Jackson, talented freshman from Alpine, Utah, checking into the game. So is Matt Jones. Matt Jones is seniors in there. So you've got Jackson, Kennard, Tatum, Jones, and Harry Giles is also in there now for the first time tonight. Tatum has Beecham working on him. Been moved by Tatum, stumbled a little bit. and threw off the rhythm of the shot, and Fluger's coming the other way, and Notre Dame's got numbers. Bounce pass, Pastoria. That's pretty sweet right there. A lost start of the bounce yeah, pass, Dan. At the right time, too. Took it to the elbow, didn't overcommit. Really good. And Notre Dame's taking the lead, and I tell you what, Fluger's come into this game and giving him a little lift on defense is another deflection. Oh, oh, no doubt. Bad shot. Tatum needs to go to the rim. Hey, look, Kennard's got to put his head under the basketball. What a nice pass. You mentioned Fluger defensively. He doesn't overcommit, throws it at the right time for story of running, gets the result. You know, so many guys now run for a three. So many guys over penetrate, getting their own shot. That was just really, really simple basketball. Bray sends T.J. Gibbs, freshman guard, into the game, along with Austin Torres, the senior big man. Gibbs guarding the ball, shot clock inside five. Tatum, that's why there are a lot of people who like Jason Tatum. The ability to score like that. About 45 guys <laughs> from the NBA sitting around here watching a lot of people. I'm guessing he's the number one guy. But I like what Duke's doing. They're going right at the bigs of Notre Dame. We saw Jefferson do it twice. We saw Tatum do it there. Get it and go. Torres is open. It's that lateral quickness we were talking about with Farrell that got him into the lane. And then there's a kicked ball as Farrell tried to bounce pass it out. You know, one thing you see out of Notre Dame players, there's no uptightness offensively. Like nobody's worried about a make or miss. They're just playing. Farrell right there got a little out of control. Nobody gets excited. He's all right. Reset, regroup, let's go. Yep. To that point, Dan, talking to Bray today about Farrell, he said, you know, he, he teeters on that edge. He said, but you live with it because right. of what he gives you. The story almost got the end one as he has a nice take to the bucket. An excellent free throw shooter will go there, fire up a couple, shooting 93% on the season. Right. For coaches out there, you're playing against a team that has decent athletes, 
don't go side to side. You just saw right there, Fastoria just went north and south, straight at. If you drive straight at Duke, you beat Duke. If you try to go side to side, they can guard you. You think these guys, all right, they're athletic, they're big, they're long. You just go straight at them. And that first step you saw with Giles there was open. And once a defender opens, you've got him beat. Astoria makes one out of two. And we're tied at eight. Nearly seven minutes in on Big Monday. Notre Dame had a about a four and a half minute drought, which they didn't score, but in the last minute 50, they put six on the board. Jackson gets in the paint. There's Fluger. A tough-minded play, pulling around the rebound. Farrell wanted to so badly, but he knew better than that. It's pretty deep. He's got range. See, when you go side to side, mm -hmm. Jackson guarded. Had Fluger made, or excuse me, had Fostori made one more dribble, it would have been a bucket. Fluger step back. Put some time on the shot clock. And that was good defense. That was so much better defensively by Kennard at all than what they were doing, Duke, against Wake Forest. Oh, Kennard was a nifty. Kennard. Oh, man. A little lingerie on the deck. Hey, this is simply called giving a guy the business. Right here. A little spin. Oh, a little up and under. And Fluger ended up darn near at half court. This is showing that, showing that. <laughs> Put it up there nice and soft. Don't you think he's kind of an old school scorer, Kennard? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's going to be doing that when he's 70 in some rec league somewhere, giving some 30 year old the business. Made a concerted effort in his freshman year. Everything is beyond the art because he is a fabulous long distance shooter. But this year has made the effort to use use that type of ability and it's expanded his game you know what he's done and this is what smart players do his ball fake is tremendous like a lot of guys kind of fake he shows the basketball and players react to the basketball reason they don't react to a head fake or a nod that you show them the ball they're jumping good choice and pressure Gibbs taking it all the way he chases down the block shot colson inside a really nice by fluger fluger made two of them yeah, yep. you said the art of the bounce pass. There it is again. Yep. There's two of them for him. Neil Jefferson at the elbow, backing down Bonzi and Hill. Wow. Make a nifty little hook shot. 13-10. Blue Devils have the lead. All right, here's how you stop that. You don't let Jefferson catch the ball on the elbow. If he has to take one step out by because you denied him, he can't make that move. But right there, comfortable, whoop them. He's made all three of his field goal attempts. He has six of Duke's 13. And that is so good right there, Reese. Everybody came to help. I'm telling you, against Wake, there was no help, and you could have driven it down into the bucket. The turnover, Allen leaves it for Tatum in the miss, and the pass was just a little off, and Jason couldn't finish it. So now Notre Dame tries to answer. Fail to beat him, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, up and down action, and when we come back, to Notre Dame, Dan Dockett will break down Bonzi Colson, the Dockett on court demo coming up on Big Monday. Notre Dame and Duke in the ACC, and right now, Bonzi making his presence. Cutting and screening. And Dan, he's given Duke all kinds of problems in the meeting in his career. He's leading the ACC with better than 10 and a half rebounds per game and averaging 15 points per game about 15 and a half and to Dan's point about Notre Dame playing off of him also gets a couple of assists does a little bit of everything he's a guy who has matured over the course of his career is Beecham gets down a couple of free throws to make it a one-point game yeah he's just a monster in a one-on-one -on -one. and as you said he can find you know guys that size with that body type have two things great hands and great feet he has both now, was that far enough out with Jefferson? Or I don't maybe think so. a step out of the elbow. Yeah, but see, he had to give it up. If you just make Jefferson take a step out, it's difficult. Farrell draws the charge as Frank Jackson tried to get in. That's the first foul on Frank. Well, Frank Jackson just needed to catch square up and either shoot it or shot fake it, not just put his head down. Farrell too quick. Luke making Notre Dame use some time in the backcourt. Irish now inside 20 on the shot clock. Talk about Notre Dame's offensive system, but in terms of 
the tempos, that story goes around his back. They're not one of the quickest teams in the country. They do look for opportunities, and they don't mind taking shots. And when they get it inside, Bonte can do some work. Hey, that time it was late clock, so they just threw it in there. He, most teams use a high ball screen as the equalizer late. They find Colson on the block as the equalizer late, the go-to shot. Jefferson on Colson Farrell tried to reach in there, and O'Neal oh, had that just bad luck and tried to get it back to a teammate, and Colson's there to take it away. That's exactly right. That's bad luck because he had tremendous position. Let's see if they go back to Colson here. I think they're going to second foul on Frank Jackson in just a few moments. You know, Colson doesn't need to have his feet in the paint because he can get to the paint. It's kind of a Bonzi Wells type move back in the day. He kind of perfected the mid post, kind of off the block. Colson has that exact game with great touch. Jackson goes to the bench with those two fouls. I tell you what Colson has, it's really odd. Really skinny legs. Like really skinny legs. And because of that, Jefferson was able to get around him. Allen penetrating, good pass to Tatum. Jason has it knocked away and turns it over. Gibbs splits about three Blue Devil defenders, and now the Irish on the move. Beecham, 4-3. That's seven straight for the Irish. Three balls already. Farrell's got his hands on, knocked them away. Allen. Answers. Oh, you can boo all you want. <laughs> and he does not care. Grayson Allen did it down four in the last minute against Wake. Crowd going crazy. That's a big shot in this game, Reese. They were ready to really cut it loose yes. down in that student section, and Grayson hushes them for the moment. That story has to go and take him. If I'm Duke, I'm finding Grayson Allen right here. They missed him. I'd get him another shot. And the ball Missed was too late getting there. Beach him at the other end, and he dunks it politely. Uh, you said it. People say it all the time. No point guard. There's an example right there. Why is Tatum bringing the ball up? You got three guys out here on the perimeter that should be. They allow Tatum to do it. No good. Bernard kicks it out. There's Matt Jones. Jones knocks down three. Now he really struggled Saturday against Wake Forest. Just one of ten from the four, one of eight from three. So that one had to feel good to see it go through the bucket. You wonder why Duke's good? Those two shots right there. A lot of teams would let this get away, not Duke. Is that a good thing? Most of the time it is. It is, because next time he gets within rhythm, he's going to be ready to shoot and probably make it. Gibbs gets a shot blocked by Allen. Grayson let him know a little something about it. A quick follow to beat the shot clock, and Duke's coming the other way. Allen, jump stop. Beats his man, ball's knocked out of bounds, and Grayson wanted a call and didn't get it, and Farrell goes over and gets it. And am I going to miss that? Brett Musburger's last call on Super Tuesday, Georgia and Kentucky, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. I believe, I believe Billis is going to be there with him. And, you know, on Saturday, when Dick Vitale worked with Brent for the last time, uh, Dick, Dick gave him a little kiss on the cheek. I'd, I'd love to see that from Billis on Tuesday night. Yeah, I don't know that Brent likes that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I'd love to see that from you. I'll kiss you on the cheek. And no, I was okay. not going to say that. Uh, that was, it just... might be altogether unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I did give John Beeline a kiss the other day when he gave him a scholarship. I was like, all right, I'll kiss you right anywhere you want. <laughs> Austin Torres with the follow and the bucket. And, uh, Duke and Notre Dame here in a 21-19 game. Reese Davis, Dan Docks, we both had the pleasure over the years of working with Brent Musburger, and uh, I know that he's been a big part of, of games with you. Oh, he, not only games, but growing up, I grew up an hour away from here in Maryville, Indiana, which is Chicago TV. And I remember when he was the young guy on Channel 2. He was the up-and-comer. Always, he, for some reason, as a sports caster on local television, made you want to watch. I'll never forget it. And then it was like, hey, there's Brent on NFL know, Today. NFL Today, yeah. yeah. So what a great man. The boys in the desert get him now. And... <laughs> by the way, this is a cleanup. Uh, that last follow by Torres has waved off this story. Hit the, hit the two free throws. And 
Boy, wish Brent well in everything he does. He's been nothing but a gentleman, a great pro, a lot of fun to listen to over the years, and I appreciate everything that he's done to help me. I don't really know why I thought of this at this particular moment, but Duke is a one-point favorite tonight. <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why that came to mind just right now. Brent, for what, first time I worked with him twice. First time I ever worked with him. Yeah, I'm nervous because he's the guy. We go to a break, he says, and when we come back, Dan Dockage is going to tell you how to break down Etwan Moore's jump shot. And I looked at him, I said, what? He goes, ah, oh, laddie, you'll figure it out. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> he did bounce play. Jason Tatum puts I, it home. I like Tatum when he's free throw line in, playing bigger and longer and more athletic. I don't like him bringing the ball down the court. Harrell splits the defenders, fine speech. Oh! DJ puts it on the front of the rim this time. Kennard looked up at Tatum, decided he couldn't get it there. Jefferson rolling. Now he's got Torres on the block, backs him down, and can't get it to go. Jones with the offensive rebound. Grayson Allen, no good. Kennard chases it down. Allen's going to try it again, and second time it rolls home. What a play by Kennard. I think he threw the ball back in between the legs of the Notre Dame defender. I think he did. What a play. 10-2 Duke run over the last two and a half minutes. This is what we talked about. You can't get stuck if you're Notre Dame. Now, you've got to guard Beecham, but the rest of these guys, I'm not so sure. Well, Beecham forced that one, hit the side of the backboard. The shot clock did not reset, so we're now down at five. Luger realizes it, fires it. No good. Now a fresh 30. Torres follows it up, and he draws the foul. Let's take another look at that play, Dan, just down to our left by Luke Kennard. Look at Kennard, he out-hustles three guys, throws it in right, right between the legs. Right through the wicket. How about hustles, beats three guys, throws it between the legs right there, and gets an assist. I think, didn't he? I think he threw that with his off hand, too. Left-handed guy, I think he bounced it between the story of his legs with his right hand. Hustle gets rewarded in basketball. I, I say this all the time. Okay. Uh, Torres is not, not good. Uh, he's probably not too surprised to use that right hand. When he played quarterback in high school, threw right-handed. Maybe Torres ought to shoot left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick Canyonberry style might help, too. Over I think we need to go there. Right. But, you know, getting back to Kennard, to me, that, if you're sitting there as a freshman, you, you have to, like, play to that level of hustle. Jones creates a little space and knocks down the jump. I love what Jeff Capel is doing. Remember we said you got to play off of Kennard and Allen. They're using Jones at the top of the key, and they're running a little triangle action, blocker mover action, where Allen and Kennard go underneath. It is great stuff by Jeff Capel right here. Hey, here's an idea. What if instead of waiting weeks for your tax... That's how you have to play. Like, that didn't get set up because of Grayson Allen. That got set up because you have to pay attention to those two guys, and everybody else feels comfortable when you play through Allen and Kennard. Well, Notre Dame's trying to find its answer on offense. Duke has scored on five straight trips and enjoying a 12-2 run. Notre Dame would in need of a bucket this trip. Did you see where Jefferson forced Tolson? Yeah. Forced him way out. And Beecham was fouled on his way. That's going to be the one and one for B.J. Beecham. Fouled on Kennard, I believe. Luke's first on the night, and Beecham will go to the line. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Wednesday is National Signing Day for college football. It will be covered coast to coast. 12 straight years, the top high school football players make their official commitments. Everything starts at 8 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU, then it moves to ESPN2 at noon. Back to the Duda Rep the day off at 5. Everything's streaming live on Watch ESPN. 
the ESPN app. You a big fan of watching Sunny Day and no. the hat dances? No. No, I'm a big fan of college football, though. It's my favorite I know sport. That. All right, well, you, you, this time next every time year. Every on your radio show, you talk about it. This time next year, are Notre Dame fans happy with their football team? I think so, happier than they are right well, now. Well, of they've, course. They've, they've changed a lot on their staff. Some tough luck this year. I, I, think they'll, I think they'll be back as Kennard is long with it. I think they'll, I think they'll be happy. Although, you have to define happy, I guess, as I sit right. here and think about it. Notre Dame fans ever truly happy no. unless they win the whole thing? No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, then, then no. If, that's, <laughs> if that is your definition of happy, then the answer is no. All right. Again, look, look, look what just happened there. They played through Kennard. He missed. All right, Tatum did what he's supposed to do. He rebounded, and they get a bucket out of it. Houston rises up, and it rises up over the top of the backboard, and Houston will have it back. Watch it. Uh, look at Tatum. He just and it makes a really smart play here. He doesn't force it. He's not trying to score through two guys. This is winning basketball. Look, Tatum could score three points a game and be a top five draft choice in the NBA top ten. He's that talented. But if he learns to win, they're in business. They still got plenty of time to figure this out. And we've We've talked about quite a bit on the course of the season for Duke, particularly on college game day, whether all of their pieces fit together. There's a foul in the backcourt, and Notre Dame will be shooting free throws. Whether all their pieces fit together in terms of guys knowing their roles. The coach of the year right now for Georgia Tech. All right, Reece, Fighting buzzes. Reese and Dan, you guys. All right, Ravi. Farrell goes to the free throw line after Kennard picked up that foul in the backcourt. That was Luke's second, and he's taking a seat on the bench. You know, it's funny talking to Jeff Capel. We asked him, did Coach K ever do that to you when you play, take away your gear? And he just laughed. Like, what do you think? Of course, of course he did. Coach Knight did that to me in my first college game. Like, we won by 20 against Miami of Ohio. Next thing you know, we're in the football game. Tatum shot See, partially like deflected. I, again, that's a wasted possession because Tatum isn't going to do anything with that fading away. That's sort of whirling on the edge that Farrell just did right now yeah. as we check in with Allison. Well, during that last timeout, Notre Dame spent almost the entire time talking about what they need to do better defensively. And a big part of that is talking. Mike Gray telling his guys, can we just have one possession where you talk the entire time, move, and are in the right position? They have to make sure they're talking through those screens. Matt Farrell told his guys, we've got to lock it down on defense. You know what else? And Allison is so right because they've missed a couple of things, but... They're doing a really nice job. The story is of getting on top of Grayson Allen. Now he fouled right there, but they're not doing a very good job of denying anybody else. So anytime there's pressure, they can just relieve it at the top of the key to Jefferson, and he's been effective. That's good by Fostoria there. He did not allow the screen to touch him. Allen already has 10 points tonight. Antonio Brankovich, who Gave the Blue Devils good minutes Saturday against Wake Forest, getting some run in the first half. Here's Allen and Farrell with the rebound. And that was exactly what Allison just said. Mm -hmm. Two guys came to Allen, then two guys left him. Allen got a good look. Allison right on it. DJ Beecham is to get right on it offensively. Colts and slipped the screen, and yeah, he was itching. That story is just, he doesn't look quite right with the shot right now. He's usually such a pure shooter. He's had a couple of near air balls tonight. Irish have missed seven in a row, and now they turn it over on the travel. They're just here completely out of sorts and probably fortunate they're within five. Good free throw shooting has helped that out. Tuesday on ESPN, Big Ten and the SEC will start in Maryland and Ohio State. Mellow, Tremble, and Maryland. Now, they've had a little bit softer Big Ten schedule early. I had their game. I know you've got this one tomorrow night a couple of weeks ago. I think they're pretty good, Dan. I, I think they are getting job. They're 17. I think they're a top-10 team right now. They are undefeated in conference play on the road. And that'll be followed by Georgia and Kentucky and Brett Musburger's final game. Super Tuesday is presented by CenturyLink on ESPN. It's available. Streaming on the Watch ESPN app is Rankovich picked up a foul. So we'll walk to the other end and shoot the one and one. It's player control. They're saying one and one. Grayson Allen's trying to tell him. I think he straightened him out. Okay, I saw Les Jones signal the one and one. Now with the player control, it'll just be Notre Dame's ball in the backcourt. Let me ask you, what, what, what do you think of Notre Dame's team? Is Notre Dame the kind of team that can go on a run here? 
because they have shooters, I yeah. think they can. Um, but Duke's been able to take them out of that so far. They haven't had a lot of clean, in-rhythm looks in the first half, it doesn't seem to me. But you've got Farrell who can create, Vastoria and Beecham are both excellent shooters. You know Colson can score, not necessarily from the outside. Not his strong suit, he can't do that. But he can't get the roll and Tatum has the rebound. I can't even begin to tell you how much better Duke is defensively in this game from their bigs. And Frankovic just came in and had a great possession. They took him out before that last one. That's pretty good. Now look where Jefferson caught. He's not even looking to drive out there. Can't drive from that position. And the foul is called on Fluger who wanted to travel. You know, we talk a lot. Sometimes in broadcasting, journalism, you look for that proverbial turning point, and sometimes it's over-dramatized. But with all the turmoil that's been around Duke, and when you have a win with a moment like Kennard's shot, what can it do for a team? Well, it, just it, wait for it, it, it. Well, it gets you your clothes back, number one. Number two, it, <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel good about yourself because they were awful, Duke was, for a lot of that game. Like, it was not a different Duke team. Mm -hmm. And then the second half, Kennard just decided, let's go. How about that? Pretty good, man. I think uh, Tatum, as he made the move, got, got hit in the face. Oh. And... He gets smacked in the face. Jeff Cable wants to know why it wasn't a foul. Let's have another look at it and see his that story was guarding him and trying to contest. I think it was Col yeah, it was oh, Colson. Man. Colson came over and got him right across the forehead and the eye. That should have been an end one. I don't say that like that was such a hard foul. I say that like these officials are making about three grand a piece out here. How can you not call it? How do you miss that? Account? And that story is Rawson. Contact, but still can't get it to go. We're under a minute to go in the first half. Duke with a seven-point lead. Kennard's back in, and he knocks it home from the corner. That is pure, and Duke has a double-digit lead with 45 seconds remaining to play in the first half. That was sweet. Coaches, run your break like that. Send your shooter to the corner. Overload a corner, which is exactly what Duke just did. Wide open for Kennard, the best shooter in the building. And Tatum knocks it out of bounds. 16 on the shot clock. Duke shooting 54 percent from the floor while notre dame normally a good shooting team is about 20 percentage points below its average shooting just 28 percent in the first half i see this kid if notre dame's going to win this kid's going to have an influence i'll tell you why matt ryan yes yeah. not the quarterback the shooter <laughs> do give you a little bit of room and he can shoot the basketball with good size if i'm telling you if notre dame wins matt ryan will have a big second half 44% shooter from beyond the arc. Bernard keeps Beecham from getting the ball. Farrell's just going to have to shoot over the top of everyone. And step too far away, and now the Blue Devils can get the last shot. It has been a rough first half offensively for Notre Dame. And a lot of that is due to the Blue Devils' defense. They haven't had a field goal since the 841 mark. Barring some type of turnover is going to end that way. Perhaps a shot after these free throws is Matt Jones goes strong. Yeah, Jeff Capel did a great thing right there. He set the matchup he wanted. He was looking to see who Matt Ryan was guarding. Ryan had just come in the game, and he's not a great defender. He was guarding Jones, so they cleared out a side, gave him the middle, and he whipped Ryan getting two free throws. Jones, for as much as he's played, hasn't been to the free throw line a lot. Just dozen times shooting 67 percent after this one the Irish will have 4.4 to see if they can have a little momentum bucket as we head to the locker room DJ Gibbs will come in, in the final seconds Remember, Kennard's on the floor with two fouls, so he's got to, yeah, they to play defense would be careful. A 21-6 run by the Blue Devils. Final 8-20. Farrell pushing. And a launch from about 40, and it's no good. So the final 8-41 of the half. 
Notre Dame doesn't get a field goal. Look at what the Blue Devils did defensively in the paint. And I'm telling you, that's the bigs. Jefferson, tremendous. Mentally is what Mike Gray said at the half, especially on offense. When they failed to score, they hung their heads, and then they didn't turn around and guard anyone. So he was really frustrated with his team and that respect. And defensively, you know, early on, they did a good job of forcing Emile Jefferson to be the guy to beat him. But then Duke started to kick it outside. They started to hit threes. He said, if that continues, this game is going to get away from us. We have to be better guarding one-on-one. -on -one. Better on that end and on this end of the floor, Allison. They need to get Steve Astoria started. He was just one of seven against Georgia Tech on Saturday, one of five in the first half here. BJ e. Beecham from the elbow. That's a good start for the Irish. He changed the lineup. You have Fluger in here, so they're going smaller, which allowed Beecham to play against Tatum on the perimeter. Good matchup, good move, Mike Gray. Allen going to the bucket, gets the lob pass from Emil Jefferson, and bodies flying everywhere. Foul's called inside. I believe they're going to call that on Farrell. Is it Farrell that got that one? It was, and it's his first. A fresh 30, handoff to Allen. And now, in a matter of about four seconds, first Farrell fouls Allen, and then Fluger does it. It's his third. Well, Fluger is doing what the scouting report says. Get on top of Grayson Allen and fight over screens. Never go under screens against Grayson Allen because they'll read them and kill you. So with that third foul, Fluger started the second half, and he has to go to the bench. The freshman T.J. Gibbs is in, and as he did in the first half, Neil Jefferson got in the paint and got a shot. And he needed a little help to finish it from Matt Jones, and Jones gets the tip in. Veteran move by Jones. Everybody on Notre Dame looked up at the ball. Jones ran right past two people to go get a tip in. See how everything's going side to side mm -hmm. through? And you have to straight line drive. Easier said than done today. So Jefferson stepping right in there. to discourage that. And a strong drive gets over Kennard from Gibbs, who just checked into the game. Against Duke, you go side to side. You can find if you want to move the defense. But in the possession, after you've moved the defense, the straight line drive, as you just saw there, and Mike Gray said to Allison, is going to be there. But you can't do it off of no reversal. Uh, Kennard made a good move, a little bit too good. As he's called for the travel. Don't play on one side. Go side to side. The ball goes side to side. There's one side. Here comes it. Now you're in the middle. Now everybody's more man-oriented. It spreads the defense. You go score. It's remarkable how team shooting percentages increase based on the number of times that they swing the ball from one side to the other. It, you know, it, let's just say you bring it down and you throw it into the post. It's 33%. percent you swing it, it's 68%. D.J. Beecham hits the three as Notre Dame. Tries to get this crowd into it. Notre Dame knocks down the triple. BJ with his second in this half. The Irish have hit all three of their field goal attempts. And got a call on Duke. It'll go the other way. Allen called for the push off. Second foul on Grayson Allen. I kind of like this out of Jeff Capel. He's, he's picking up full court. Why? Because Notre Dame is comfortable now in half court offense. And Allen almost got away with the foul. It actually was a good call. He grabbed the man and quickly Grayson picks up second of the half and third on the game. Vestori was working on him. He almost got away with that one. And then when Vestori lost his balance, say, you didn't like it, you're looking at me. I am looking at you. You grabbed him. I'm I looking at like you it. funny. Why? <laughs> you don't like the call? Put two like hands on the like other shot. Hey, you're not working with Billings tonight. I'm not talking about every play as a foul. <laughs> a 7 nothing run. And just like that, Notre Dame playing with a little of that toughness that Mike Gray wanted. And the Irish are back in it. Cut it down to five. Fonzie Colson for about 16. Notre Dame starting to feel it. Common soul. Get some buckets. Notre Dame didn't get any. In the final 841 of the first half, in the first 218 here, already four field goals. And we've got a five-point game in South Bend. East Davis, Dan Dockett, and Allison Williams. Glad to have you with us on Big Monday this ACC match. Allen 
Hurling into the lane, working on Gibbs. Grayson left him on the front of the rim. Jefferson's tip won't go. And another offensive rebound bucket for Duke, this time by Tatum. I cannot overstate how good Jeff Capel has been tonight. They came out of the timeout. Grayson Allen working off screens. He was going to get the ball in the middle. Fine, it didn't go, but everybody had to help two tippets. Because of it. Barrow had to throw one up. Tatum takes it away from Colson. And a great no call, letting him play on, even though there was a little bit of contact with some wrestling. See, that's different than putting two hands on a dribbler in the open floor. That's foul. Well, yeah, but tripping over your own feet isn't normally a foul. But. That I will give you. Had he not done that, I don't think they would have called it. Kennard in the lane over Bastoria. Colson fighting for the rebound. Tatum beats him to it and saves it into Allen. I go right back at the rim. Tatum. Nope. And beats him, pulls it away. Duke's defense has been able to keep this Notre Dame crowd from erupting because they've been getting key stops. Can they do it again here? Emil Jefferson is doing a great job on Bonzi Colson. Astoria again is off. That shot's just not quite right for Steve. Kennard coming into the front court. Emil wanted it up top. Tatum goes over the top. And the foul is called. Wes Jones gives it the end one. And still, now let's check down here on the floor because that was a tremendous score, but Tatum is still yet to get up. And we have another look at this as they attend to Jason. And that story was there for quite a while. I don't know why a while. that a block, but they did, and the Student body is saying not nice things. I, I don't know how you possibly could call that a block, but give Tatum credit. Hey, look, he went up, got it over the front of the rim. Look, Fastoria is standing yeah, there. That's, there is no doubt that should have been an offensive foul. I agree with you totally. Because right now, the more concerning issue is how Tatum feels. Now they're helping him up. But he's, Holding that right hand and wrist a little gingerly. Yeah, you know, he came down. He didn't it. come down on his head or he didn't come down with his knee. Uh, but you see, when he first came down, he really rolled over on his right side with the wrist. Take another look and see how he, he came down. Yeah. He sort of landed on that right arm and on his rear end, too. I'm glad to see Jason up and walking to the bench. He's a 10 points and 10 rebounds. It's his first double double. I get, I get stunned sometimes, Reese, at how you miss a call like that. I mean, really, you're outside the, the arc. Yeah. That's... You're clearly standing there. In fact, Fostori, I believe, spread his arms out. If, if you can't see him, then. Yeah, that was that was a miss. Now, okay, Tatum goes to the bench, so Emil Jefferson is going to take the free throw in his place and try to push this lead back to double digits. He can't do it. Vastoria has the rebound. And now Farrell into the front court. It would help the Notre Dame offense immensely if they could get 32 started. That story is averaging 14 and a half points per game. Only one field goal, but they'll take it any way they can get it, and they get it from T.J. Gibbs. Uh, I, don't, that, I don't blame Mike Brown. Gray got a technical, and he may go for the daily double. I don't blame Mike Bray at all. A terrible call down here. Now Gibbs is going to the rim. He gets an and one. And this drives me. I apologize. This drives me nuts. What else is he doing besides shooting? The foul was called right then as he was into his shooting motion. Right there, there was a foul called, and they wave it off, and then Mike Gray loses his mind, gets a tee. I don't blame the coach at all. You know, somehow the, the geniuses that are the head of officials have decided that it's almost impossible to get an and one, and I don't understand. I think it's a terrible rule. It should almost be we think everything's an and one 
unless it clearly isn't. That is just an awful call. And then to top it off, Mike Bray gets a technical on it, which gives Duke two points. Okay, so to be clear, you're talking about the way the officials are asked to administer and make the call. Do you think, I know you disagree with it in practice, do you think it was administered properly in that instance, or was that looked like an and one to me? That's not even close. That yeah. is an and one. And if you're going to say we have an and one in basketball, that's an and one. I mean, I, I don't know what else to do except give them an and one and let's play basketball. Now you miss two calls in a row. Of course, the coach is going to go nuts. Now, Vistoria knocks it into the backcourt. He gets some four burns, but Frank Jackson picks it up for the Blue Devils. Kennard, ball fake, and then back to Grayson Allen, who shoots an air ball. And let's see what the call is here. Neil, or no, excuse me. Uh, Matt Jones. Matt Jones. Yeah. yeah, he pushed off. It's a good call. Matt Jones pushed off on the rebound on the air ball. Matt Jones picks up his second. I don't got a little life in the building. Much of it aimed at the men in striped shirts. I'm going to the rim. I'm not settling for a jump shot here because there's going to be a call against Duke if you take it. There you go. And there's a reach. And the foul is called on Kennard. And for Luke, that is number three. That's automatic. I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. You could see that's coming. That comes in every single game. So there you go. Cut to the bucket. Beat him. Kennard was complaining. Everybody was watching Kennard. Beecham just came down the middle. Blue Devils caught snoozing. Lead cut to seven. Kennard. Now they're calling. He's waving that one off, too. Michael Stevens <laughs> waving off that. I learned my lesson, Dan. I almost said and one. Look, everybody's got I know there's no continuation as we look at the inbounds play in the dunk. Well, dude just didn't talk. I mean, there was no, absolutely no attention paid on the inbounds. Beecham read it well. But yeah, I, I thought that could have been an and one too, but. There's somebody, there'll be all of our official friends calling us and minus. There's no continuation of college basketball's canard score. I'm telling you right now, I have no. I don't. <laughs> I, and I don't want any. I have no official friends. I don't want any official friends. Any How about unofficial ones? Yeah, yeah, right. And now the officials trying to settle things down a little bit, and we're getting a whole lot of whistles. But you know what? It was really good, really good by Emil Jefferson. He forced Bonzi Colson out, and Colson was going to have to muscle his way in. Jefferson did have a forearm in him. It's a good call there. As Jefferson's second or he's the sixth this half on Duke and Beecham hits the baseline jumper. Out of bounds, play bucket. Down here, out of bounds, play bucket. Back here, out of bounds, play bucket. Get it knocked out underneath. Crowd exhorting the Irish defense. Allen. Foul. Foul is called on Gibbs. Man, I love, I love what he's doing. I, I love okay. Every time there's a hot situation in this game, they run a little blocker. Big guy one side, big guy other side. They run Kennard and Grayson Allen off and get, let them make the play. And that's exactly what you have to do. Uh, Allen is going to the free throw line, and we are likely to see a lot of that for the rest of the game, not just Grayson, but everybody, because in the first Five minutes and 51 seconds in the second half. Each team has six fouls. Next one's going to put everybody in the bonus. And the crowd serenades Grayson Allen, and he responds by scoring two points. Allen will take a break. Grayson goes to the bench with a dozen. Again, you have to attack if you know the game. You know, Allison had Mike Gray, he was talking about an attacking mindset. Mental toughness comes with attacking the rim. Gibbs is attacking the lane, goes over Jefferson and draws the foul. You know, that's a bad play by Jefferson. You have Torres out there who is not going to shoot the basketball. So what you do is on this drive, you square your shoulders and you keep your feet moving and you show both hands. You, he showed the left, but he didn't show the right. That's a really tough shot for Gibbs, and you could be there early 
because Torres is no threat. Gibbs pure on the first one. A couple brothers who were terrific players. Ashton played at Pitt. Brother Sterling played a little bit everywhere. Played at Texas, Seton Hall, and UConn. Very good all of those places as Gibbs knocks down both. I think Gibbs is going to be really good. He has a mentality. He's not out here just to hang out. He's out here to compete and do stuff. They made the drive, drew the foul, and paid it off from the free throws. And see if the Blue Devils have the answer. Jason Tatum back into the game. And after being shaken up, Tatum goes right back to work and scores again. He's already turned in his first double-double of his freshman season. Blew by B.J. Beecham. B.J. Beecham, they feel he can handle Tatum, but just blew right by him. And Gibbs picks up his dribble. A little bit of trouble over in front of the Notre Dame bench. And Jefferson knocks it out of bounds. Nine on the shot clock. Hey, you get lazy on this kid. Look at this. Now, Beecham is supposed to be able to handle him. He gives him too big an angle. Angle And kids, that was one dribble. Like, make your dribble go somewhere. Don't pound it at your own feet. Extend it, and you can get to the bucket from a long way on one dribble. Farrell takes enough dribbles to get all the way to the bucket. Notre Dame has made more field goals in the first seven minutes of this half than they did the entire first 20 minutes of the game. They're eight bucket here in the second half. This guy can get buckets. Colson trying to stay in front of him, but he's uh, going to be going to for the foul. Dan dismissively <laughs> throws his head. Tuesday night on ESPN, Big Ten and the SEC start at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Melo and Maryland taking on Ohio State. Dockage will be there for that one. And then the Rupp Arena, Kentucky and Georgia. The Wildcats hosting the Bulldogs and Brett Musburger's final game. Super Tuesday presented by Century Link, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. As Duke has an eight point lead working here, and you'll see Maryland, one of the surprise teams in the country, tied with Wisconsin for the Big Ten lead. Hey, it's no longer as Northwestern going to make the tournament. It's are they going to compete down the stretch for a Big Ten title? I talked to Chris Collins today. He's like, look, there is so much talk about the tournament that for the first time ever, we've got to temper things. And he's doing an unbelievable job. I mean, ridiculously good at Northwestern. No kidding. They've been, never made the NCAA tournament. That's why everybody talks about it. It would be a remarkable feat as Beecham just put in his 20th point if he were able to not only get his team to the tournament, but maybe win the Big Ten regional season championship. I don't think Wisconsin's going to lose another game, personally. And I think Whit Maryland is way undervalued. I think they should be in the top 10 right now. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, can Tatum finger roll? I can finger roll. Mm -hmm. Jason Tatum. Now with 14 points, 10 rebounds, he'll go to the free throw line trying to make it 15 and trying to push the lead back to 10. Beecham is being abused by the freshman. You know, they put him on there because they feel he has enough length. But look, one, two dribbles, and he is right past. Second time, he's gone right past the senior. You've got to be tougher than that. But I'll make no mistake, there's 45 NBA guys, and they're looking at this guy right here. He's putting on a show for him. And I, and I like it, Reese, because the main focus has been Kennard and it's been Allen offensively with the curls and all that, but Tatum's just playing off of them and taking advantage when he has it. That's how Duke's going to be really good. Astoria again, short. Steve's shooting struggles continue. Now one out of seven. Put Kennard into the front court. Fluger got a couple of quick fouls in the second half, came back to the game, and now a foul called. The foul is called on Harry Giles, I believe, picking up the foul. That's his third. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. Freshmen are not supposed to abuse or scoot a senior. But guess what? This freshman is no ordinary freshman, and he is absolutely abusing the senior. Late helps Tennessee knock off South Carolina, guys. Ravi, I'm sorry that we were such a bad influence on you guys. Got you guys watching for officiating, too. <laughs> Brian Dorsey standing right in front of us here. And Notre Dame with the shot clock at 10, down by 10. Farrell 
Been very quiet tonight. Loses and out of bounds, and it's a turnover as we check in with Allison. Mike Ray really positive during that last time out, clapping, encouraging his guys, telling them offensively they have to continue to move the ball and they've got to keep driving to the basket. Defensively here, guys, one switch you'll see Austin Torres now defending Jason Tatum. We've got to try something else, Allison, because the Beecham idea wasn't working. You know, Notre Dame's only one and four against ranked opponents this year. Now Torres, he, he's going to get a little, you know, and I think they're going to call the offensive foul on Tatum. Torres did a really good job there, bodying up and moving his feet and showing his hand. I mean, really, really good move by Mike Bray. Look, he kind of shows both of his hands, absorbs the contact. It, it, you know, the freedom of movement thing, it, if you show one hand, it's almost like officials assume the other one's holding. So you show them both, keep your feet moving, you're usually, you're usually going to get the offensive foul. You can move. And people sure. with misconception sometimes think you can't. And the three ball is what we need from Gibbs. And Gibbs made a couple of strong offensive moves and coming in off the bench. Well, he has played much better than Farrell in this game. Farrell's been a little excited. Lost the ball twice. But Gibbs has come in, giving him a big time lift both ends. Allen. No answer this time. And over the top is Giles. And Colson had position inside. Well, Giles was significantly higher into the stratosphere here than Bonzi was, but Giles picks him. up his fourth foul. I'm with him. Just because a guy goes over another guy's back doesn't mean that there's a foul. I thought he did a great job. I thought he got up, went straight up, kept the ball alive. And Giles picked up his fourth. You saw the number of guys. Let's have a look here. Now, see, this may be what they got him for. Do you see the little, the little push right before he went over the top? I just feel the need to present the responsible opposing view because between my us and the guys in the studio <laughs> beating them up pretty good. My favorite segment in the history of ESPN was when you were the judge and Mark May and Lou Holtz were. I would stay up to like 5 in the morning watching that thing by the time you guys came and, on. And on you Saturday. had to sometimes too. <laughs> you know, college football final days. Yeah. Well, whether you agree or disagree with the call, Colson gets one of two out of it. Notre Dame has matched his first half output, scoring 25 already here. They're down by six, still in it. Irish haven't shot it well. Duke's been unable to really extend the lead, though they pushed it to double digits on several occasions. Allen curls into the lane. Tatum doesn't get it to him. Now Tatum's cutting. Kennard looking for space. Loose. Neil Jefferson, Torres fighting for it. We got a jump ball. The possession arrow will keep it on this end with the blue devil. Hey, Torres is giving him a big time lift, doing nothing but being in the right spot and being really, really tough. You see, Torres is just in there battling. And that's what was missing early. Wow. Another out of bounds play, Dan, and Matt Jones scores and draws the foul. That's four. That's four in the first ten minutes off an inbounds, and nobody practices inbounds more than college teams. Watch here. Beecham just falls asleep. Boy, if you're Mike Bray, you've got to make a decision defensively with V.J. Beecham. I'm not trying to pick on the kid, but that was just a straight cut, not paying attention. And by make a decision, do you mean just who he guards? Because he's got to leave him on the floor. He's really the only guy scoring. Colson, a little bit of help. He's got 20. The other guys are struggling offensively, yeah. but I, to your point, you can't, no, you have, you can't make, have that. You, you have to make a decision on, what, on who he's guarding. You've mm -hmm. tried to move him around, and Matt Jones, okay, that's that would be the guy, but you got to guard. Mm -hmm. get caught snoozing. Jones, after scoring the last time, picks up his third foul. Look at all the guys from the Blue Devils who have three or four. Alice, Allen, Kennard, Jones. Jefferson all with three, Giles with four. And Torres is not a great free throw shooter, to put it kindly. Thursday night, 7 o'clock on ESPN. Big Ten College Hoops, Miles Bridges and Michigan State taking on Nebraska. I'll be headed to Lincoln, looking forward to getting down there. Nebraska had a big win over the weekend against Purdue. Streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Nebraska is one of those odd Big Ten teams started out the year, beat Indiana at Indiana, Maryland at Maryland, fell in hard times when Ed Morrow got hurt, but made a heck of a statement beating a very good Purdue team. 
seen that move from Bruce Bernard a couple of times. This time it will kiss off the window and the Blue Devils back to a double figure lead. It's up to 11. Middle of the floor with Grayson Allen and Luke Kennard is really tough. Is that any good? How about that defensive play from Matt Jones? That's just active hands. He just got active, took the ball from Gibbs, laid it in. And now Bray's going to call a timeout. Duke scored the last four, and perhaps the most frustrating thing I would think to Bray and the Irish is that a couple of them, one careless defense on the inbounds, and then one not being secure with the basketball against the pressure. You know what, six points, four of them on fours. This is tough, though. Kennard gets yep. in the middle. He's so crafty in there and so skilled, but now this is just inexcusable. You, pa you pass fake high, you throw low. You pass fake low, you pass high. That time, Gibbs pass faked high and threw high. At least when you fake high, your hands go up. So throw low or fake low and throw high. That was a unforced, ridiculous mistake there. Mike Bray, good timeout. So 13-point lead now for the Blue Devils, and I feel as if I've been asking this question all night. 9.27 to go. What does Notre Dame need to do differently here? Well, uh, two things. I, I think the ball has to be in. You mentioned Beecham scoring, but I think you got to play through Bonzi Colson here. You know, we talked about what he's able to do passing the ball. He's got to be the guy. Like, you can get shots off of kind of a point forward here with Colson, but Jefferson doing a great job denying. Luger. Look to Colson. Now Farrell gets it to him. Bonzi in the middle of the lane and he scores. Yeah, that was really good by Mike Bray. He moved Col and better by Colson. He's the guy that did it. But he went out, played the top of the key, played into the middle, played out, back to the top of the key and in the post. Moved around, they lost. Irish trying to hang in if they can handle Kennard and company. And Jefferson double dribble. Don't stand. The more you move, and movement isn't only for perimeter people. Colson moved this entire possession, and eventually everybody guarding him. There were two different people got lost. Don't stand. Move, cut, scream. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that's what you should do. <laughs> All of them. Guys, after that breakdown there defensively, you should have seen the look Emil Jefferson gave to Jason Tatum as they ran up the court, like totally glaring back at him, like, dude, you've got to be in better position than that. And that time they are going to give him the end one. Straight drive. You know, kills Duke if you move the ball. And the most significant part of that play might be that Luke Kennard has picked up his fourth foul and he's going to go to the bench for a little while. Look, on the recovery, not bad defense. And Kennard's got to be smarter. He just reached in with his left hand. Rex Fluger finishes off the three-point play. The sophomore from Dana Point, California. And Notre Dame scrapping, held down by 13. Now they've scored five in a row to get it back to eight. They're going to have Grace Allen get the ball at some point here. He's 0 for 3 in the second half, Dan. Tatum off the window. No good. Colson fighting for it and comes up with it. Here come the Irish. Beecham follows his own. Misses them both. Olsen out for the rebound. Jackson to Jones on the fly. Matt thought about it. Now he kicked it to Allen. Back to Jones. Olsen with the rebound. But Jones was unsure. He saw the corner of his eye, Jason Tatum, and he's kind of hitting his chest like, man, the guy was wide open underneath. I think he flinched a little bit when he saw that. Farrell rises up and knocks it down. Seven nothing run. I beg your pardon, an eight nothing run. At any rate, it's five. And a treble on the new Reddit. Just when you thought that the leprechaun had been put away, he bounces back. Five point game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Evo. Find new, unique, and everything in between on Evo. From our game day mass in my right pocket with my Blistex 2. I'm, I'm, I'm a mess.
<laughs> so, Ray, the, uh, the mass medal he's talking about is a small pendant of a saint that the team chaplain blesses and gives to every member of the team before every game. He says he always keeps it in that right pocket for each game. And perhaps that's helped with this rally that the Irons should have. Monty Colson working on Jefferson. Bonzi pounding that chest. Notre Dame within three, a chance to get it to two. Closest they have been in a long time, and yet another Blue Devil picks up his fourth foul in Jefferson. Man, how good was this? Bonzi Colson, great defense by Jefferson. But Bonzi Colson kept low, kept his dribble alive, played through contact. Duke tried to press. They got it up to Astoria, Colson. I don't care if he's missed every shot the last month. I'm going to Grayson Allen here. He's got the ball. Luke Kennard's on the bench. Four fouls. See how long Cable's going to keep him over there. Allen whips it to Jackson. Here's Tatum. And Tatum's going to get called for the push. Same thing. Just his second foul, but the player controls. Show your hands. Let's see. Hand up. That's an easy call for the official. You see an extended arm off the ball. Easy call, offensive foul. Notre Dame can get to within one with a bucket or tie it with a three. I got to go to Colson. Reverse it. Go to Colson. Let him play. Lob to Colson. Good catch inside. Colson with the bucket. Same thing. Colson was all over the place. How about that catch and traffic too in the crowd? Rising up, a 12-0 run for the Irish. Emil Jefferson has it roll out. Notre Dame can take the lead. Has to go to Colson at some point in this, in this possession right now. Bastoria working on Jefferson. Bastoria misses and Tatum. The good box out grabs the rebound. Notre Dame trying to take the lead for the first time since they led 1916. You know what the key to this has been out defensively for Notre Dame? Fluger, number zero, has taken it upon himself to get on top and chase Grayson Allen. And he's done a great job, except then. Grayson, I'm Allen. telling you, that was the first time Fluger fell asleep. He had been on top. I've been watching this matchup. He had been on top of it the entire half. Fell asleep. They found him. Look, he's just hanging out. And of all guys, yeah. that's one. Oh, man. You want to fall asleep on him. First field goal of the half. It's the first time he's got any kind of look. Look, Fluger, you don't pay attention to Jones. He's being guarded. You guard that guy. That was huge. That puts an end to Notre Dame's 12 nothing run. You know, no matter what happens in the last 522 here, Notre Dame's had a couple of chances where it just looked as if it wasn't going to be their night. They fought back every time. And to Duke's credit, every time Notre Dame does, the Blue Devils have had an answer just like that one provided by Grayson Allen. And he's honest to goodness. Everybody else has tried to make a play. Nobody's been able to ever since they got Beecham off of Tatum. Duke has had nothing off it, literally nothing, until that last move. Kennard in now. Kennard with four fouls returns as we wind down toward the five-minute mark here to go on Big Monday in the ACC. And Kennard's got to be careful out there. Farrell can get into your body. I'm shocked they brought him in on the defensive end of the court. Bonji Colson. Tatum grabs the rebound, and now Allen's going to take his time. Capel calling the play from the bench, and Tatum setting the screen for Kennard. He turned it down, went the other way. The flip back to Allen. Got Beecham off his feet and knocked it down. Terrible matchup by Mike Gray putting Beecham on Grayson Allen. They moved Fluger over to Kennard, and Beecham left Grayson Allen, recovered undisciplined, and Allen made him pay. Now let's see if the Irish have another answer. Farrell, nice between two defenders, and boy, Kennard, Kennard was looking 
with apprehension is Emil Jefferson was the one that drew the foul because either one of them was going to foul out and it's Jefferson who has called for the foul and that's his fifth and he'll go to the bench and Harry Giles will check in. Jefferson scored six early points and didn't score again. That's because they moved him off the, off the elbow. He caught the ball too easy. Yeah. That was a foul. You saw the reach in there. Jefferson's got to be better than that. But All right. Here's where Duke's scary. Emil Jefferson, 50-year senior, goes out, right? Mm -hmm. So you replace him with the number one high school player in the country. Now, I know he hasn't played, but he's getting better, Harry Giles, he better and better and better. This is a real opportunity these last four and a half minutes for Duke to take a huge step if Harry Giles can help him win this basketball game. And if Harry Giles were to score a bucket, you would be the first Duke player to come off the bench and score tonight. They haven't had a single point off the bench. Tatum's had a big night. Tatum over the top. Jason Tatum. Kennard recognized the mismatch. It was Tatum against Fostoria. Fostoria, no chance to influence. Duke has answered that big Notre Dame run with a 7-1 run of its own. Ball's knocked out of bounds. We're at the under four. And Tatum now with 17 points, 13 rebounds tonight, and just overmatching Steve. As in immediately following that game, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State Sports Center at night, Woody and Anderson have all the highlights for you. You had a look at all of the NBA guys checking out the prospects in this game and Jason Tatum a big time prospect and boy he has put on a show 17 and 13 340 left Duke with a seven point lead Beecham's gone nearly nine minutes without scoring for Notre Dame he has 20 on the night now the Blue Devils after all the charges they've endured from the Irish they push this lead back out to nine or ten Here's Tatum again, takes that story right to the top. Harry Giles with the follow, it won't go, and Notre Dame has it. He finger rolled it instead of just tipping it, and the spin made it come backwards, not forward. Fluger driving on Kennard. Rex Fluger draws the foul. And if it's on Kennard, and it is, he's done. Second, Duke starter to foul out tonight, Luke Kennard, who's coming off that sensational performance against Wake Forest with 34. He's going to finish tonight with 16 points on 5 of 11 shooting. So now a Duke team that hasn't got a point off the bench tonight, they've got two reserves in to finish out this final 304 as Fluger gets the members bounce on the front iron. This has to be Grayson Allen. And Tatum. That's it. I mean, that look, if these other guys can play off it. Like Jones can hit a three, or maybe you get a tip in, you know, by Giles. But this has to be for three minutes. Grayson Allen, Jason Tate making plays. That's it. Frank Jackson in the game. He hasn't scored tonight. He's averaging nearly 11 per game as a freshman, so he's capable. Farrell's guarding him. Allen. Over Fluger off the curl. Giles with another offensive rebound, and there's the first bench yeah. points of the night for Duke, and the Blue Devils needed it. From you're Giles. not going to believe that. That was a pass. That was, I'm telling you, that was a pass. Grayson Allen saw Giles underneath there. There a little while. Giles is knocked down, and fouls called. This is really big for Giles. I'm, I'm telling you, they did a great job. Give Jeff Capel credit. He did exactly what we just said. It was going to be Grayson Allen. I think Allen sees him, throws it down there. Now, maybe I'm giving Allen a little too much credit, but what the heck, he deserves it. And Harry Giles just cleaned it up. Either way, it worked. Yeah. Quite effective. Effectively. I think Grayson Allen has been great in this game. Very patient. That, and he's, and he's, he's played through being held. He's played all kinds of different ways, handling the ball, playing without the ball, standing on the side. I, I think he has been great in this basketball game. All right, the officials are going over to the monitor. They're looking to see if there's a little extracurricular at the end after the foul on Colson against Giles. Back to the point about, we'll, we'll take a quick look at this. I saw Harry got a little aggravated. Yeah. I think Bonji was standing over him just a little bit. Shot to the hamstring. Play on, I said. That's what they decided. As Giles shoots his free throw, you're talking about 
all of the scrutiny that Allen's been under. We were talking to Jeff Capel tonight about whether he could regain that at some point this season. But if he channels that energy as he did tonight, he can still be a highly effective player, but you still want him to be able to play with that edge and that, that emotion that was so vital in their national championship season. Look, I, I had a chance. I introduced myself to him, and I, and I told him something that you can't repeat on the air to just play. You know what I mean? The heck with all the psychologists, the amateur psychologists. He needs hell. He needs this. Just play. Now, Fluger fell down as he was handling the ball. He got control again and called timeout to save the possession down 10. Notre Dame needed it. No, I just, I, look, I, I think that, that Grayson Allen has been so over scrutinized. Like Jason Duffner, the golfer, said, you know, in hockey, you trip, you get a two minute penalty. In basketball, you trip, you need counseling. I thought that's a pretty good line. Now, I've never really seen anybody trip. I'm just tired of everybody psychoanalyzing Grayson Allen. Look, he did what he did. And he did bring that part he, of it on his own. There's no question. There's no question, but I, Coach K has earned to me the ability to discipline his players. Coach K has not won this many games by not being tough on players. And we don't, as a public, need to know what the discipline was for Grayson Allen. We just don't. And, you know, I asked Jeff Cable, were his parents involved? Yes. Uh, so to me, you know, all of a sudden, everybody got a psychology degree. Well, I, the reason, Dan, and I, look, I agree with you on that aspect. I, I've used the line over and over because it's as simple as this to me. Stop tripping dudes, and he has, you know, at least up to this point. It, there, it's nothing more than that. But the reason, there are two reasons that it's garnered so much attention. One is obvious that he plays for Duke, but the other one I think is because it is so unusual. I mean, you even, I you, even I mean, you haven't seen you haven't seen guys do that, and it's unusual. It's drawn a lot of attention. But to his credit, he's had guys the last few games that I've been watching try to get under his skin and aggravate him. And he goes into every road arena, and he, every wise guy's got some kind of sign he thinks is funny, like that one, which is fairly funny. But. Um, I you know, and he's dealt with it all beautifully. Like the thing with Force yeah. this week, and he didn't do a thing. I didn't even think the NC State bench thing. I didn't think he did a single thing wrong. And, uh, you know, he's handled himself very well here tonight again as we're getting on the floor and high up on the floor and arrow pointing in Notre Dame's favor. The last thing I'll say, I thought Wake Forest players were ridiculous, and particularly the children's kid coming over and grabbing him. And look, if you're if those of you that are judging, if you're out there judging, uh, judge this: that Grayson Allen handled himself beautifully in that, took himself out of the situation while Wake Forest players were acting the different, the other way. So there's growth if you're out there judging as an amateur psychiatrist. Well, there is growth, but also Dan, you know when you, as a competitor, you sense weakness, you think you can get a guy off. Sure, you're going to try. Farrell. Can't get it to go. Giles with a big, strong rebound. Sorry, this is big for Duke that Harry Giles is doing what he's doing because he's really contributed here in the last three and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. And Farrell fouls Jackson. Well, Notre Dame, who had had Duke's number since joining the ACC, they've won five of six, and it bears repeating that the rest of the world was 24 and 101 <laughs> against the Blue Devils during that time, and Bray had won five of six, but tonight, Notre Dame's going to lose its third straight game, barring a big rally here in the last 40, 141. And if they are unable to do that, they also lose a second straight home game, having lost to Virginia prior to the loss on Saturday to Georgia Tech. But that's the way it's going to be in this conference, because you not only have the elite teams in the conference sitting at the top and a Duke team, which potentially is elite, but you also have surging teams like Georgia Tech or a team like Syracuse capable of beating Florida State. It's people are gonna take it on the chin in this league. Do we like Syracuse? Because I do. Like Leiden's really good. Yes. And when Andrew White went there from Nebraska, I thought, wait a second, because I thought Andrew White was really good at Nebraska, average about 16 and a half good defender. I think he had 24 Saturday yeah, against uh, Florida State. And hit big ones. Yeah. So I you know it's, it's amazing how those programs, if they struggle for a moment, we kind of count them out, but Jim Beheim's pretty good at what he does. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if Jones pushes this lead back out to 11, and you take a look at the ACC standings as 
most here at Purcell Pavilion at the Joyce Center headed for the exits. Notre Dame is six and three right now, but about to drop to six and four. Duke will move to five and four, assuming that they can hold this 12 point lead over the last 89 seconds. I, I like North Carolina to win the league, but I'm not saying North Carolina's been disappointed. Don't, don't get me wrong, but man, they have a veteran group, skilled players, good bigs. The field Pinson, you know, better when he came back and then he missed a couple since then too. The three is knocked down to get the game back to nine with 114. They'll take a tape and show you 30 clips where you don't miss. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where like Jim uh, excuse me, John Beeline's really big on that. Mm -hmm. Don't show don't show players misses, just keep showing them makes, keep showing them makes, keep showing them makes. Does that cure it? No, but it's a part of the cure. And something has to be done with Fostori because he's missing bad. Well, he's two out of his last 16. That's an interesting point because why, you know, I think a lot of times you always think in terms of correction, but sometimes it's a it's a mental thing. And why would you let somebody in your head there <laughs> showing you a bunch of misses, well, right? I mean, sometimes people say, okay, I'm going to show you your misses, your elbows here, this yeah. is that, all that kind of, okay, great. But that's fine. That's one way of doing it. But unless you know for sure, right? You, you have to find an absolute flaw. Like, if somebody's leaning backwards, if the ball's short, usually your shoulders aren't in front of your feet. Like, think about any sport. What sport would you throw the ball forward but lean backwards to do it? In basketball, sometimes kids do that. So, yes, if, if that's something you can change, then fine. But otherwise, you got to keep them in the gym and show them good stuff. By the way, undernoted stat tonight, Duke's 19 of 20 from the free throw behind. Late three gets it back to eight as Notre Dame won't go away. Well, Notre Dame is shooting better than 80% as a team from the free throw line, but it's been Duke tonight that is, has been sensational from the charity strike. You know, Duke has not settled. I thought against uh, Wake Forest, they really settled early in the game. Like, they didn't play well. You know, Coach K took away all their stuff. You think, oh, they're going to come out? No, they did not. And only a great second half by Kennard. Big shot by Allen and Kennard. But they're going to have a look at the I think clock the issue. Three, is, right? Yeah. You know, it's a it's a clear three from Gibbs. I think they're looking to see what happened with the clock. It was 103. The clock stopped. And it started before the. No, it should oh, start. Yeah, that's right. We're not inside inside a minute yet. So we're going to figure out what to do. That's. I think Dorsey. there's a mandate from the head of officials that says under a minute and a half, make sure we get the officials on TV two to three times. Is that, is that official reporting by you? <laughs> Maybe you know what we always we always see uh, the backside of the officials. Maybe we need to put one of those little snoop cams like we have over here by us, so we can. I've said put see. advertising on the back rear ends of the officials. You know. <laughs> like back in the day, Bad News Bears, Chico Bail Bonds, something like that. Eat at Joe's. The clock should have kept going. They took three seconds off. And Grace and Allen will go back to the free throw line. Gibbs is called for the foul. It's his third. As Notre Dame is stretching out this game as long as he can. Crazier things have happened. Down eight. Duke has made its last 16 free throws. Unless the Blue Devils cooperate a little bit from the free throw line, it'll be difficult to get the rally. And Allen's not interested in cooperating, at least not just yet. <laughs> well, the only miss tonight was when Neil Jefferson a shot for Tatum after he was fouled. Remember Tatum fouled and hurt his wrist on the yeah. end. Jefferson shot the free throw. It's the only miss tonight. Gibbs goes back and it's rejected by Tatum, but a foul's call. I like Gibbs. I like Gibbs a lot. I think he's going to be a terrific player here at Notre Dame. He just goes past Tatum and is smart enough to lean in. Call. Well, Tatum. Not only has his first career double-double, but he wants to join in with his other teammates and get at least four fouls. Already had a couple of guys foul out. Kennard's fouled out. Jefferson's fouled out. Now, Tatum has four. Giles has four. John Mooney, a seldom-used reserve, checking in now for Notre Dame. 
So this is an offense defense kind of move. I got to believe they're put in there to commit the fouls and put Duke on free throw line as Gibbs makes both of his. Now the full court pressure. Mooney's on the ball. Gibbs over in the corner. Mooney's in there. The trap and the steal. They don't have to foul. Mooney's going to get it. Fire it up in three. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay on this end of Notre Dame. Good for Mooney. He caused a turnover. He knew maybe been better to drive the basketball, but still Notre Dame ball. And now you get Astoria and Colson back in. Mooney, Mooney looked over to the side and was like, wait, I'm just now getting warmed up. <laughs> Give me one more of those from the corner. Hey, I'd like to see if I'm Notre Dame. I'd like to see Gibbs get the ball here. He's got it. Yeah. Driving on Grayson Allen. Allen goes to the deck. No call. Gibbs can't get the roll. Fight for the rebound. And Allen comes out of there with it, and he's fouled. He's played a great game. Yes, he has. He's done everything you want a veteran player to do in a hostile environment. And as you said, the most important thing was he has been patient. Allen will go to the free throw line looking for his 20th point tonight. He's got officially right now five rebounds, handed out three assists, and Gibbs gets the fourth foul of the night for him as Bray has a whole host of substitutions. Bray's about to make a line change here. Do, do you think part of Grayson Allen's deal is that for some reason in college basketball, we're looking for a villain from Duke. I've heard so much of that, and it's... You know, maybe, I'm sure it is for some people, but if, if that's the case, I think it's it's unfortunate. I think that any time you've had the level of success in any program has, it's, uh, it's a pretty divisive thing for fans. They either love you or love to hate you, and... They've won a lot. They're, they've been they've been the standard, and they've done it for a really long time. And they've had a great number of stars that were unapologetic. But, so. yeah, but it's almost to me like that's become a thing. Like we've got to find the newest Duke villain. And, and look, I get he brought it on himself. I get he killed people. I get that. I do. But it seems like we got to find a Duke villain. We won't find one on the free throw line because they've hit 20 in a row. So maybe Notre Dame's just going to let this one roll out. And the Blue Devils are going to go back to Durham with a victory and perhaps in the not too distant future will be the return of Mike Krzyzewski getting close to part of that time frame recovering from back surgery. Duke gets its first win at Notre Dame since January of 1995 and the first win since Notre Dame joined the ACC. Irish now in their fourth season in the league and Jeff Capel and the Blue Devils get an 84 to 74 win. For Allison Williams, Dan Dockage, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Reese Davis saying good night from South Bend on a night when Grayson Allen and the Blue Devils get a win on the road. Oh!